Hi, Internet. Welcome to the Gred Turin YouTube channel. It's Thin Lizzy Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time for a Blatstar Rider song. Uh, actually, I don't know what we're reacting to. It's going to be really funny if it is a Blatstar Rider song, except it might not be, because it might be kind of boring. Um, so, yeah, uh, for first-time viewers, I'm Greg. Uh, I used to do reactions to more things, and then I kept getting copyright takedowns. So now I pretty much just do Thin Lizzy because... I'm working two jobs and also like writing a, a novel that's going to be coming out soon. Um, so stick around for that. And by novel, I mean weekly like web novel for free. Uh, but yeah, let's let's stop the rambling. Let's see what Thin Lizzy song we're getting this week uh, because that's what we're reacting to. So let's open up the random number generator, see what we get. That's enough of that. So, yeah, we are reacting to uh, King's Call off the first Phil Lynott solo album. So, uh, this is, I think, it generally considered to be, like, one of the stronger tracks off the album. Um, but... It features uh, Mark Knopfler as the uh, as the guitar player and co-writer, and I'm gonna be honest, I am not uh, that into his playing style. Uh, I know that a lot of guitar nerds really love him. Um, I think just like his like clean tone and kind of like Spanish flamenco-y kind of thing uh, that he that he like has to his playing, I just I kind of find his playing an annoying. Uh, I don't like Dire Straits for the most part. Um, yeah, I think there was like one song that someone in the comments turned me on to that was kind of cool. It was like a 10-minute live track. Um, but in general, uh, like as a guitar player, I just I don't like the sound of his playing. And you kind of get that all over this track. But I do think it's a good song. So I've got the lyrics pulled up. Uh, so this is basically just about... Um, Phil Lynott's uh, reaction uh, to the death of, uh, of Elvis. Oh, man, trying to find a good uh, version of this. Um, yeah, so it's basically uh, Phil reacting to Elvis's death and um, just, like, mourning and writing a song about it and just, like, his gut emotional reaction to it because Phil was a big Elvis fan. Uh, you hear a lot of Elvisisms in his um, vocal stylings throughout his career. I mean, if you think about it, like, you know, he was one of those kids who would have grown up on Elvis and the Beatles. Um, and, you know, Elvis was the king of rock and roll. It's weird. I was actually um, scrolling through uh, Facebook and, uh, you know, saw some posts about um, Elvis's uh, death. Um, is today the anniversary as I'm recording this? Let's look that up. Elvis Presley... Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm recording this on uh, the 16th and uh, the anniversary of Elvis's death. Um, so I guess I'll uh, touch on my uh, familiarity with Elvis before we get into the song. Um, I would say I'm an Elvis fan, um, not necessarily an, an expert, um, but actually I probably know more than the average Joe. Uh, I was actually writing a uh, book about Elvis uh, that I ended up shelving. Um, just because I got to, um, I got to a point in it where, uh, it was, it was a difficult part of the story to write. And also, um, I, I got too involved with other projects. Yeah, I remember right now. So I was writing a book about Elvis and, uh, then I got an offer to do a film score and, uh, that ended up eating a ton of my time. And then at the same time of the film score, we record a new music video and new single. And so that crunch made me push that book way far on the back burner. And then by the time I got back to it, I felt the market had shifted enough where it wasn't necessarily worthwhile to continue. 
because the idea was um there were there was like an era of just like kind of like uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Vampire Hunter, and there was this book where the Beatles were zombies. There was this era of like sort of like quirky humor uh, to uh, writing of like well-known uh, historical figures in like a more fantasy comedic aspect. And I had the idea of um, writing a book about Elvis's uh, martial arts and his legitimate skills as a martial artist and some of the cooler stories about his martial arts and making that like the focus of a novel, um, but not not necessarily going the comedic angle. But by the time I had finished those other product projects, like those books weren't really coming to market. And so I decided, you know what, it's not um, it's not maybe worth it to do this right now. So I have like... I don't know, like 20 chapters of that um, done. Um, and I mean, I, I liked it. Uh, it was a fun project. And as part of it, um, a project, I really took the time to like listen to a lot more Elvis music, uh, watching a lot of Elvis movies. Uh, King Creole is the best one by a wide margin, if you already didn't know that. Uh, Viva Las Vegas is kind of a bad movie, but all the scenes with Anne Margaret are great. Um, so yeah, I saw like a good, like, I don't know, like 10 or so Elvis movies, listened to a bunch of his albums, went through his history pretty thoroughly. Um, so I, I generally know Elvis, maybe not as well as, as a super fan, but probably more than the average person. And uh, I did enjoy writing the book. So I, I'm definitely an Elvis fan. I'm definitely a Phil Linett fan. I am definitely not a Mark Knopfler fan. I'm sorry. I just, uh, just not, not my thing. Um, but it's going to be interesting to, to dive uh, into this, hmm, there's a video, you know, I'm not going to do the video, simply because that's going to take, uh, too long to get this ready for you people, um, so, I don't want to waste more time getting that ready unexpectedly, and plus that might get blocked because YouTube-ness, so we're going to hopefully, uh, listen to a high-quality studio version of this, and get into our analysis. And uh, that is my computer freezing us up, so sorry about that. Give this a second to load. Um, that's a good pausing point anyway. Um, so what you have there in terms of the piece, you definitely have that like dire straits kind of sound to it. Like you've got Mark Knopfler's guitar tone, for better or for worse, uh, in my opinion, for worse. Um, yeah, just I'm just not a fan of the way his guitar sounds. I just like that like clean tone uh it's just like it's just like it's ugly sounding to me it is an ugly unappealing guitar sound but the, the tragedy is i think this is actually a great song and i have to give mark credit as a songwriter for co-writing this with phil so obviously there's something good here but i just like ah just that guitar sound that way he plays just like grates on me but yeah let's uh looks like it's loaded a bit let's get back to it Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, Windows update makes your computer run so much faster. It was a rainy night. The night the king went down. Everybody was crying. See black sadness had surrounded the town. I went to the liquor store. I bought a bottle of wine and a bottle of gin I played his records all night Drinking with a close, close friend Now some people say that that ain't right, that ain't right. And some people say nothing at all nothing. But even in the darkest of night You can always hear the king call You can always hear the king call yeah, so um, really dig in the rhythm section. Excellent drum fills, uh, you know, great groove to it, excellent bass playing. Um, and, you know, the guitar playing, like, it's a, it's it's being done well. I think if uh, you had a different tone to it, I wouldn't dislike this one as much. I, I don't dislike the song, but I just, I think, yeah, that guitar tone, just like, it, I don't know, it's, it's like nails on a chalkboard for me, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know what it is that's doing it uh, for me in that way. Um 
but melodically, love the melody, really great, uh, love the lyrics. It was a rainy night, the king went down, everybody was crying, it seemed like sadness had surrounded the town. Me, I went to the liquor store, and I bought a bottle of wine and a bottle of gin. I played his records all night, drinking with a close, close friend. And uh, I think that's really brilliant lyrically, because the idea of, like, you can see Phil, like, being a huge Elvis fan, that's, like, one of his heroes growing up, finds out Elvis died, and, like, sad drinking while listening to Elvis records by himself. The close, close friend he's drinking with is the music of Elvis. Uh, you know, we've all had that, like, musical hero of ours who has died, and then, like, it hits us in such a way, and then you're just, like, sad listening to their music. You know, with me, probably Jim Steinman was probably my, my big one where that really hit me in such a way. Uh, I don't drink, um, but, you know, if I was a drinker, you know, I know people who've, like, just sat alone listening to music with a little bit of booze and just being sad. And that's just like a very true experience. And so you can feel like the sincerity of the character in the song, but it also feels very personal to Phil. And then the next uh, set of lines, which is the chorus. Now, some people say that that ain't right. And some people say nothing at all. But even in the darkest of night, you can always hear the king's call. You can always hear the king's call. Um, and so, uh, you know, say that it's not right, like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be drinking alone, I was sad. Uh, and then some people are just, like, not even commenting on this. Uh, but the idea that, like, perhaps, like, the spirit of, a, you know, the king, Elvis, can't disappear even with his death, uh, and that his presence is still always felt. Um, yeah, very cool lyrics. Uh, and uh, I'm going to rewind to here and get back to it. Is it the king? Well, they put them away in Memphis, six feet beneath the clay. Everybody was crying, everybody said it was a plain gray day. Me, I went to the liquor store, and I bought another bottle of wine and another bottle of gin. I played his records all night, and I got drunk all over again. Okay, um... Sorry, if you saw me smiling, it's because I'm on the website uh, Genius, which has annotated lyrics, and it's the annotations are sometimes, like, really absurd and silly, and so I got a chuckle out of this. So, the line, well, they put him away in Memphis, six feet beneath the clay, and then there's um, uh, an annotation that says, Elvis was buried in Memphis, this annotation is unreviewed, and I just felt just very silly about all of that. The fact that, like, you felt it necessary to, like, make that citation, and then the fact that they're like, but this citation is unreviewed, so I don't know how seriously you should take it. Like, that entire process just felt very silly to me um, from, like, an academic stance. Um, so that's why I was smiling, which is probably an uncouth place to smile. Um, but, well, they put him away in Memphis, six feet beneath the clay. Everybody was crying. Everybody said it was a plain gray day. Me, I went to the liquor store, and I bought another bottle of wine and another bottle of gin. I played his records all night, and I got drunk all over again. So basically saying, like, the day he heard the news, he got drunk listening to Elvis records because he was sad. And then the day of the actual funeral and ceremony, he's like, screw it, I'm, I'm going to get drunk again. Um, which is just like, you know, it's really... It fits well with like, the somber, depressing nature of this song. Like, it is really brilliant in that sense. So, yeah, let's rewind to here, get back to it. I got drunk all over again. Now, some people say that that ain't... And I'm sorry, that was a really great drum fill. Over again. Now, some people say that that ain't right. That ain't right. And some people say nothing at all. Say nothing. But even in the dark, it's the night. You can always hear the king call. You can always hear the king call.
And then as far as lyrics there, uh, during the like um, bridge and solo we had, I wonder if you're lonesome tonight, uh, which is, you know, obviously a Elvis song reference. I'd rather go on hearing your lies than to go on living without you. And then um, a lot of the vamps are just sort of a repeating of uh, the chorus. But there's a couple new lines towards the end. Now the stage is bare and I'm standing here. Then might as well bring the curtain down. I cried the night the king died, which was a great vocal. Um, the solo, um, chord progression, uh, sounded very Dire Straitsy. uh, like it sounded as if, like, that was a section written by Mark rather than Phil, um, and just, I don't know, just, like, the, the chord progressions, uh, the, the guitar tone, just, like, everything about that band just, like, kind of bugs me, um, uh, which is, like, uh, you know, an interesting thing when you when you look at a piece like this, because chances are, you know, if if you are a fan of music, someone you love and respect worked with someone who gets on your nerves and just annoys you. And that's just like the nature of the beast. I remember like when I was in high school, I really hated Green Day. Uh, but Rob Cavallo, who produced for Green Day, also produced a Kiss track. Now, granted, the Kiss track he produced was like one of the lamer Kiss songs in the catalog. So, you know, in that sense, uh, you know, like I wasn't necessarily a fan of the output they made together, but he still worked with, you know, people that I liked. And so just like everyone is so interconnected. And so I would always get annoyed with like the like snobby metal bands like, oh, those people are corporate sellouts. And like guarantee you they worked with your producer. You know, like everybody is connected in this web. And so this elitism in a way of saying like oh that person is is fake or a sellout or beneath me or we would never want to work with someone like that you know i find that to be very silly and so like there's musicians that i maybe don't care for personally but you know chances are they worked with someone in the food chain that you do like and so this is an example of someone who i'm just like i'm just not a fan of their music i haven't found anything that like makes me want to listen to their music um, collaborating with one of my favorites. And so when you have those two together, which one ultimately wins out in the end? I mean, I have, um, you know, the ultimate test, like, does the song make, like, the shuffle playlist? Like, will I listen to independent of the album? Uh, the answer is yes. I do listen to the song independent of the album, and I do enjoy it quite a bit. And so while there are some things I don't like about it musically, Overall, I do like it musically. So despite there being like certain elements that don't work for me, I still think it's very strong. I think it's a very strong lyrical piece. I think it's very catchy. Uh, I think the vocal is great. I think the atmosphere is great. I just, you know, and I think that the writing is good, even if I don't like a lot of the musical choices of one of the writers and recognize the, like the negatives they brought to the table. I'm also recognizing the positives that they brought to the table. Like this is a song that, really only could have been written by the two of them. And what Mark brought to the table on this track in a number of instances was very good. So just because I might not like his style doesn't mean I don't respect him as a musician, respect him as a player, uh, or even as a, as a writer. Um, I mean, obviously, Money for Nothing is a song that a lot of people are super into and Sultans of Swing. Like, I hate both those songs. I think both those songs 
I don't think they are bad songs, but they annoy me personally. And so I don't like them at all. But I would say, yeah, they're good songs. I just don't like them. This is a good song that I like. Uh, and so hopefully that nuance came across. Um, it, it definitely feels like much harsher criticism than you're used to getting on Thin Lizzy Thursdays. But specifically with this track, this is a um, like an instrumentalist. I'm just I don't like their particular style. Doesn't work for me. If you like it, that's cool. Um, yeah, just not my cup of tea. But this song, absolutely great. And now comes the tricky part of where do we rank King's Call? Uh, no, 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 no. Let's see. Ah, all right. So this this is this is weird because you know. So as I'm thinking of this, as I'm looking at this, I'm considering the strength of the piece and like in terms of like composition, very strong lyrics. It is catchy. I do have biases against uh like some of the sonic elements of it, but I do recognize the quality of the piece. And so as I'm looking at this list, I'm thinking. You know, in terms of quality, it's probably towards the top of the list. Like, it probably deserves to be, uh, you know, at least high A rank. Like, maybe, like, below Emerald. It would be, like, the lowest that feels in terms of quality. But in terms of preference, in terms of how much I like it, I mean... In terms of preference, whew. I mean, I could put it, you know, it really, like, depends on the mood. Some days I'm hot on it. Today I'm not as hot on it. I mean, this could go, yeah, this this, this one is, is a weird one. Because, like, if I'm, if I'm just listening to it, I might rank it higher dissecting it musically and how mixed I feel about it, like, I almost would put it, like, a below a merry jingle based upon my current mood. And so, like, and I know that's way too harsh on it. Like, I know that is the wrong place to put this. Um, all right, let's... Yeah, this is this is uh, this is tricky as to where to put this. Um, all right, this is where I'm feeling it today. I feel that that's that's a fair spot for it. It might even be still a hair too low. Uh, this is generally you know more well received in the fan base. Um, but yeah, that that's where I'm gonna put it. A rank. I enjoy someday she is going to hit back more musically. Um lyrically this one's a bit stronger. Um I put it above Don't Play Around because I I do listen to King's Call more. So even though like the microscopic analysis in some ways um frustrated me more because it, I really had to pay attention to Mark's playing and not just like let it wash over me and just get into the lyrics. Um, yeah, I think like the micro analysis might have hurt this one. Uh, not in terms of lyrics, but just like really honing in the, the guitars and what they're doing. But yeah, this seems like a fair spot for it, which I'm sure no one will agree with. Feel free to debate me in the comments below. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a great week and um, Yep, I'll see you next Thursday for more Thin Lizzy Thursday. Woohoo, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys. Bye.